What's up everybody, welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset where we help you bulletproof your mind and body through health, fitness and entertainment. So in today's episode we went into detail on how you can reduce the calories that you consume without tracking. We know how much of a ball ache it is to track calories so we thought we'd share some tips and tricks that we like to use with ourselves, with our clients that have had a uh, Pretty much really good success. Um, so we hope you enjoy today's episode. So let's get into it. <laughs> Tracking calories then. So I, I, I know you, you've got a strong opinion on it, but I think it's so fucking tedious. And I, I do have started to struggle more and more, like tracking the calorie side of things. Um, you talking to me? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't tra- I don't track my calories. I know, but I think you've, you've got a stronger opinion on it for your... Ah, for, as a must for... As I must for people at one point, yeah. Aye, so um, I know I know you don't personally track calories, but you have a, you're similar to me now, we have, over the years of tracking calories, I think there's more of an understanding of what each meal is giving you nutri- nutritionally, mm. but I would say this is one of the most common things that, <laughs> I can't believe you said that you talk to me. <laughs> no, I was kidding, no. <laughs> so it's fucking two years in the room. <laughs> Uh, no, no, we'll just go, we'll keep going. This is this is raw podcasting right here. <laughs> I'm gonna actually cut the camera for you guys that are watching on YouTube because he was looking at me as if I was speaking a different language. <laughs> but um, one of the one of the biggest hurdles, biggest challenges I've had with nearly every client that I've had has been tracking cameras. <laughs> Just rang me. You, this is going to be a terrible one. No, no, go. We we'll start again. No, we're we'll just going. We're we'll just going. Right. Uh, so tracking. So, so you you have got a strong opinion on tracking calories with your with your clients. How well does does everybody do? No, not very. Uh, but it gets to a point where they go, "I'm not losing any weight," mm-hmm. and I go, "Well, you don't know what you're eating." Oh, so do you? Oh, right. That's quite. I actually quite like that. Right. Strategy. Some. To so, some extent. I don't push it that hard because I don't like pushing it hard. Mm-hmm. I think pushing anything too hard on any of your clients is not a good way to get down because it, it f- makes them feel that uneasy way. It makes them feel like they're, they're getting tracked they're getting trapped right. into a corner. Do you, and you don't want to make anybody feel restricted. Even right. though you're not restricting them, you're only telling them to track calories. But it does get to a point where it's, all of them go, right, my goal is to w- lose weight. And James is telling me to do this and I'm not doing it and then I'm not losing weight and I go well there's a reason you're not losing weight and it's not because you're not tracking the calories it's because you don't understand how many calories you're eating to then drop your calories how can you ever drop your calories without knowing what you're eating yeah so um, it's like when you're you're younger somebody tells you to do something you do the opposite it's a wee bit like that and mm-hmm. they the, mm-hmm. the coach the client uh, right. to, to slowly, to slowly surely. so if, if they start here and they start tracking right away brilliant well mm-hmm. done some people come off it and they will get to so if somebody starts it and then they come off it, they'll still hit that stage again where yeah. they go, you know what, I, I, I do actually want to lose weight, so I'll go back on it. it. So on the lead up to that, as I said, that a, lot of, a lot of my clients, I'm maybe not have been as hard push with that, but what it did send me down the rabbit hole of looking at the data of other ways that you can reduce or get a better understanding of your calories or just create that um, more mindfulness around nutrition Mm -hmm. without having to track your calories. Mm -hmm. So that's the point of today's episode. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's get into the list of things that we've got. So I think on the, you you can kick us off then. Right, so the first one, so before I go any further, I do agree that there is other ways that you can lose weight and without actually tracking your calories yeah. mm-hmm. but the reason why I track calories is to get people to understand what's in all their foods mm-hmm. once they understand what's in all their food they don't need to track their calories because yeah. they can count it up in their heads and go you know what I want to get to maintenance and then I want to get into a cut mm-hmm. or I just want to live at maintenance for the rest of my life it's like jumping in a car do you know what I mean jumping in a car you don't have a fuel gauge in front of you you, you don't have the information to be able to know how far that you can drive and you've not so, a clue however if you've been in that car every day and you know roughly how many miles you get every time you fill up and as long as it's the same price then you've got a rough or a better guidance of understanding mm. how far that car yeah, can you, go so, the, so that's where the counting carries does play a benefit mm. but of course there is other ways which we're going to go into today which I fully agree with as well mm-hmm. if you do these and you do them all together you will eat less calories and it's shown in the data yeah. as you've already spoke about so the first one 
is avoid drinking your calories. Mm -hmm. So you you drink cal you love drinking your uh, not maybe not drinking your calories, but you this is the, this depends who we're speaking to. So mm -hmm. this is purposely mm -hmm. to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And aye, this say, is to lose weight. Aye, when I think maybe highlighting the point when we're seeing uh, drinking calories, we're talking about full fatty juice, full fatty uh, energy drinks. Um, Pints, but I uh, well alcohol. I think mm -hmm. that's that's maybe a separate subject that we maybe go into in a wee bit more detail. But mm -hmm. you will be surprised the amount of calories that are in pints, cocktail, wine. Um, if you've never tracked that before, it is such an eye opening. Oh, experience. since we're in Scotland, a bottle of Mad Dog Twenty Twenty is about thirteen hundred calories in the one bottle. Is it? Mm -hmm. Thirteen hundred. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it'd be a bit. I think a bottle of wine's about a thousand. Mm -hmm. it? Certain, certain uh, daft, <laughs> certain crazy. Um, but yeah, when it comes to drinking your calories, I think most people don't drink the or pick that drink to quench their hunger it's more of a side thing it's a, oh that's it's tasty a, i like that no, it's, it's, it comes with a meal mm -hmm. um that alone changing your calories this is like this is something i do with a lot of a lot of my clients have their own full fatty uh, juice to be fair there's not many people that i see that still drink full fatty drinks but if you swap the full fatty drinks for the diet drinks that already creates um, a, a pretty significant calorie deficit for, for, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So um, drinking calories, if you're in, so we're saying this is solely for the purpose of losing weight, this is actually quite a good strategy to gain weight. If you're a, a, um, a you struggle to put weight on or struggle to build muscle and you get your appetite is just so restricted, drinking your calories actually can help it, but this is where you would make shakes and things mm -hmm. like that. So I, so you wouldn't just drink two litre of full fat cola <laughs> on a bulk? Getting massive. So, <laughs> If we're on, if you're on YouTube or that, right now I've got a shake here. It's probably about a thousand calories and it's fucking got, disgusting. It's it fucking banging. So <laughs> what I've got in this is 200 gram of oats, a scoop of vanilla protein and blueberries and strawberries. Look, <clears throat> it's no the best, but it's easier to drink your calories when you're in a bulk because you're eating so much food throughout the day. And then the same goes if you're eating, if you're drinking your calories when you're on, trying to be in a cut, it would be really fucking hard. Aye, yeah, and and then the other reason is that, like you are limit to some re some respect you're creating a calorie deficit, so you you're looking to consume less calories than what you once were eating. And why would you want to waste, in a sense, those calorie points if you call them that to um, liquid mm -hmm. when you could have more chicken, more chips, more pot whatever it is that you're going to have. But the thing is, you know that, and I know that. But most people will go, well, well, you know, I want yeah. that. Yeah, so you know what I mean? that's point number one then. So if you're looking to, to create a calorie deficit without tracking your calories, drink less calories mm -hmm. or no calories. And we're going to go straight into the next one. It's drink more water. Yeah. So I I love this one because it's um, it's one that I do have seen come up in the fitness space of oh why do you get people to drink three to, three to four years later? Doesn't it actually prove that it that, that it uh, creates weight loss in in a client study or whatever? Forget about what it does. It's no magic. It's just it's just a way of breaking your psychological cycle of are you truly hungry in that moment? So mm -hmm. if you're currently not drinking any water and you go to drinking two liters of water a day. You'll be in the bathroom more. I think that's hundred <laughs> percent. That's a given. Your body will adapt to that to some respect. But what you'll qu probably quickly realise is that the drinking water will not um, will actually quench that hunger signal. That will that'll bring that tone down because mm -hmm. it, it's not really a hunger that mm -hmm. you're that you're feeling. It's it's a craving in that moment in time. It may be at the time of day where you've been working really hard and then you usually have lunch at this time of day, but you've not had the chance to go out, so you, you feel that craving come in. Um, there's there's so many different strategies with water. I like the one that after with every meal drink a glass of water. Mm -hmm. I, 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 prefer, I like that one. Yeah, rather like than just one. going for two three liters throughout mm -hmm. the day. Um, I think that really separates everything. That I find when people go for like two to three liters of water a day, they drink too much water at the one time because they go, oh, for, I forgot. <laughs> if I'm eating four meals a day and they've like a, like a five hundred uh, milliliter water a, a, in a meal, Aye. then they, they get the they get the, the water spread out. Mm -hmm. Cause, and that's probably why some of these studies that you look at, because you'll probably have a group of individuals, they're paid money to drink three litres of water a day, and then they're sitting on their arse, they're going about their normal routine, and then they go, oh shit, oh, I've not, not, not actually drank that. So they drink, so in theory, the whole day, yes, they've drank three litres of water, but if you strategize it, cup in the morning, cup with every meal, that will have a more of a profound benefit for, for, for what's going on. 100%. Like, as, as we, the last episode was on discipline, so it's having that discipline to spread your water throughout the day. Yeah. Aye, exactly. Spreading that three litres of water right. throughout the day, and then, as you say, it quenches your hunger signal and 
mean, water just makes you feel a bit better. Aye, hydrating, like, like <laughs> who the fuck does not want to be hydrated? It's you know, quite a city. It's so fucking simple. I still run into people who don't like the taste of water. I know, but, so have I. I mean, the reason for that is, is because their taste buds are so overly... Um, sensitized. Sensitized to the sweet drinks, the mm-hmm. sugar, the, mm-hmm. like, whatever that is, the engineered design drink, whatever it could mm-hmm. be. Um, and that baffles me, because there's not, like, not all water tastes the same as well, but see, you know, when you're not drank enough and you're drinking that, it's, it's almost orgasmic. Oh. <laughs> it's orgasmic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right, next so one. the next one is look everything before I go any further everything on this is it sounds so fucking simple Aye, it sounds but stupid, you just actually. need you just need to fucking do it Aye. and it, I, I know I'm coming across quite harshly there but if, if you just need to fucking do it and prioritise protein with every meal mm-hmm. is a simple but a lot of people find it challenging way because they're like fuck how the fuck do I get protein in breakfast lunch and dinner mm-hmm. do you know what I mean like because the protein sources for lunch and dinner are pretty similar yeah. and a lot of people feel like they're eating two dinners that's where it comes in mm-hmm. you know because a lot of people when they look at lunch they think they're a wee sandwich do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. Everybody, everybody's got That's the I, I always feel like a lot of my clients have lunch skewed mm-hmm. how it is in their mind Even, I'm like your lunch is probably pretty similar to your dinner um, your dinner might be a bit bigger portion mm-hmm. It's but, just it's, it's how we've been raised and um, the routine of what we've been exposed to growing mm-hmm. up. Um, I'll never forget, like, it's the same for breakfast. I remember, like, I was like, you know what, I fancy a steak and some eggs instead of my bacon this morning. I remember people were like, I can't believe you're having steak for breakfast. It's like, it's a meal. So that's why I kind of moved away from the breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it was like, I'm going to have three meals today. Three, three meals today. So mm-hmm. it's my first meal. Doesn't matter, like, what's in that. Nutrients wise, I want to make sure it's balanced enough to feed me what, what I'm looking for. Definitely, definitely. So, protein's a hard one, though. Pro- I know that's that's protein is the hardest because hard most girls, mo- it's a hard one for the for, for the girls that we that, that we probably both train. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I guess I don't necessarily know the reason why. I guess that everyone's a wee bit scared to eat more because if with eating more, I think a lot of the girls that uh, the women that I train they are scared the red meat. Scared, scared the red meat. Like obviously. I mean, in the past, red meat was kind of demonised uh, in the media. Is, uh, Do you know what I mean? It's uh, kind of demonised. Like, oh, eat too much red meat, it's really bad for you. One of the I was eating two steaks a day for like, a solid year <laughs> because I didn't have much else to do and I felt the best that I ever felt, like, physically. I was getting stronger than I ever did. I didn't have any digestive issues at all. Like, I was shitting when I needed to and I wasn't <laughs> doing dodgy shites, right? But you know what I mean? Solid bad boys. The big solid bad boys at Perth. I would wake up and I would do a shit and I'd maybe do another one through the day, maybe. So I was doing one or two sh- solid shits a day, right? I think, uh, I think with the the, the <laughs> most humorous <laughs> character, maybe the an episode. Of how is your shit? <laughs> There's different types of shit that you can have. And by the way, see if you don't shit on a regular basis, that is not good. <laughs> no, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. But one of the most nutrient dense foods that you can add, I, I do believe, is red meat. However, I know I know some people who are, are vegans and vegetarian for whatever reason. Um, and good on them. Yes, it's more challenging with those guys. But Much if more challenging. If, if you're not in that category, and then don't be scared not to not to eat those foods because it, 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 yeah okay it might be the more h- higher calorie mm-hmm. dense food that doesn't mean you're going to gain weight with that so, no 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 but protein protein with breakfast I probably struggle with the most to Cause try and I only, get meals in I, only have, I only have eggs every day yeah and I can understand why that would get so fucking tedious and yeah. boring and even sickening to other people yeah I can have it every day but like my taste buds are definitely different to other people mm-hmm. or my just my discipline when it comes to food, I don't really care like, as long as... you know why. Exactly, you know why, why exactly. So if somebody's not in that mindset and you're like, have eggs every single day, like, ah, I know, it's quite sickening. Aye, which is fine. And I guess back to the, what we said last episode, uh, discipline, it doesn't need to be every day, day. Yes, we're saying try and get protein in every meal. If you're not getting protein in every meal, then try it with a second meal first. Mm-hmm. If you're not aye, having build, breakfast... Build up. Uh, if you're not having breakfast and you're only having two meals a day, then arguably, yes, you should be... I'd say you'd want to be consuming more calories, but start with that second meal. See, see, see to be honest with you, that's, what I, that's, that's, what I, that's exactly what I do mm-hmm. with my clients. If they say to me they don't really get any protein in any meal, I start them with one and right. then I build them up to two. And I go, see, after four weeks, look, I, I'll be honest with you, you need to be having protein in every meal by that point. Aye. If you're no, then we're, obviously we're, we need to look at it. Mm-hmm. But 
from now on, you need to, your first week, you have it in one meal. Your mm -hmm. second week, you have it in a second meal. And your third week, by the third week, you should be having it in every meal. And then by the fourth week, we're probably adding another meal in if we're up in the calories. Yeah, yeah, and there's, there's different things that pay into, uh, play into that signal and whatnot. So, um, no, I like that. I like that, the, pro uh, the protein. There's other ways to do it. You've got different shakes and uh, different different strategies on that matter. So, find what fits your lifestyle is mm -hmm. the best advice there. D definitely. So, the next one, and this is the biggest one. For MD listening, this is the biggest one that will reduce your calories, and that is cut out mostly processed foods. Mm -hmm. Most right. processed foods that you eat are full of shit engineered to make you eat more. The taste, aye. It's from the taste, the smell, the, the texture and touch. Feel. From the packaging. Aye, everything. It's actually quite bizarre when you look at it, because I think it's like a billion pound dollar, whatever you want to call it, industry mm -hmm. um, of... <laughs> Um, and, and look, it's great that we live in a world where we don't have to hunt our food, we don't have to, we're, food is not scarce. Um, mm. And it's quite sad when you think that people around the world are um, starving and struggling and things like that. But um, this is the moment where we are in time. Um, there is, we have never, we've had an abundance of food, which is why we're also facing an obesity epide um, epidemic, as mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. um, because the food is so... Accessible, mm -hmm. like you press far too, too, far too accessible. Imagine, imagine being able to click two buttons on your phone. Uh, just five years ago, that seems bizarre. That five years ago you would I know, not we couldn't get you can get everything's delivered. Honestly, everything it's unreal, and and it's no wonder like, that that people are gaining weight and things like that because it's so easy to overconsume. But we shared a study last time that we were talking about that just there was two groups of individuals. One group uh, consumed processed foods and the other group were told not to consume any processed foods. And following these two groups for eight weeks, it came down to that one group was consuming 15% more mm -hmm. calories mm -hmm. than the other group. And that group that consumed more calories was the guys that was eating processed foods. So do the math on that. That's if the average consumption of processed foods probably falls in the 2000 category. Mm -hmm. That's 300 calories of extra calories not on not on a weekly basis on a daily basis do the math on that over a week over a month over a full year then, i'm actually going to do the math on that uh, right now and then do the then 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 associate the math uh, sorry then associate the calories 300 calories per pound of body fat over that time so 300 600 900 like it's so many calories over time so the compound interest on those extra calories alone right is so 300 times 52 is 15,600 calories extra over the year. I'll divide that by 3,500. Why? <laughs> you can tell me you didn't do math. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to do something else there. So 52 times 300. What am I dividing that by to get the pound, pounds of body fat? Oh, it's um, fourth. Uh, it's three thousand five hundred. Three thousand. Well, th this is this is like funky, funky numbers. I think it's a wee bit more. It can be a wee bit less. It depends on the person. But if you do three thousand five hundred, how many pounds? Are? Oh, I meant I meant to times it by three thousand three hundred and sixty-five because it's per day. I think <laughs> let's move on with this before we make it up. <laughs> it's a lot, right? It's no, a lot no, of but <clears throat> seriously. Cutting out processed foods is actually so much for, more difficult than oh, you would no. think. Because there's so much, like, everything, see if you had to look at, so, like, I guess, first of all, what is a processed food? Um, so, I would put into the category things that are packaged up and it's got more than five ingredients, I would say. I'd, I guess it, it depends on the food. Like, if you look at a steak cut, it's just steak in a packet, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't class that as processed. However, if you look at a protein bar, that has got so many different things and that, from if you look at the ingredient list, multiple different things to make that what it is. Mm -hmm. And again, with protein bars, you look at that as a healthy option. Uh, yeah, okay, in comparison to some other things, but that's still classed as protein, uh, mm. processed food. Mm -hmm. I've ate my protein intake raw with um, no, pro no protein scoops, no protein bars. And I can tell you my digestion is so much better than what it is when I use some of these foods. Not 100%. So, so you'd be surprised from a digestion, from so how many calories. When you look at, and I've looked at something, so my, my dad and that, they like the bird's eye, a uh, southern chicken. fried chicken. Aye, aye. Southern fried chicken, right? So see if you get a chicken breast, right, which is much bigger than the southern fried chicken, I mean, you get a, a medium sized chicken breast, you're talking 200 odd calories, right? Mm -hmm. no, many, no much more than that. By the time you put a wee bit of oil seasoning, you're maybe up at 250, 300. That chicken breast from Bird's Eye, which has got less chicken, more breadcrumbs, which is just going right. to give you so much less nutrition, mm -hmm. is higher calories. I know. And you're like, What's going on? What the fuck's going on right. there? Like, what is, like, how, yeah. how is that bread come so much calories? Yeah. So you'll probably be surprised if you cut out the processed food, you'll actually be able to consume more in terms of pounds per 
meal. Like, mm-hmm. for example, you're allowed more uh, grams, sorry, grams per meal, so you're allowed more potato, more, more even to, to, to some, some extent, cut chips, um, chicken breast, meat, whatever it, whatever it may be. So, hundred mm-hmm. percent. So, I've actually done the correct calculation, <laughs> right? So, in that in that study, in that example, mm-hmm, if the people who consume processed foods, they would gain thirty seven pounds more over the year. That's crazy, isn't it? Thirty seven pounds more just by eating processed foods. Yeah. So if you think eating processed foods isn't gonna make you gain weight, there's studies out there that show mm-hmm. they didn't even they only tracked them over eight weeks, but that would have continued and that would have got worse. Yeah. The more they the bigger they got, the worse they felt, the more they would have been inclined to eat worse. And that's just nutritious food, food alone, because mm-hmm. there's a movement aspect, there's a mm-hmm. you, aspect, you, would, yeah. you would move much less. Now, let's get off our high horses for a sec, because there is some damn tasty processed food. Oh, there. yes. <laughs> so, I absolutely love processed foods. Uh, yeah. That is the issue. <laughs> that the is the issue. It yeah. tastes so fucking good. Yeah. But understanding that, like, give yourself, like, I don't like, the, I, I hate the phrase cheap meal or um, die bre- I know we say die breaking on last episode but I hate the, f- the, the, the allowance like sl- like we said last time slowly cut down on what you're eating just now and try and push it push out more of the, the non-processed foods mm-hmm. and see how that changes your lifestyle mm-hmm. so, slowly but surely yeah. knock it out but knock it out as much as possible look we're allowed takeaways we're human beings Aye. but at the end of the day some people are consuming processed foods t- twice a day Aye. Twice know, a fucking day. And things like that, like convenience as well is another one. Mm-hmm. It's, it's got a long shelf so life. So easy. And it's easy to make. And mm-hmm. cutting up a chicken breast and putting seasoning and that. Yeah, okay, it, it takes a few steps. So I guess it really depends. On, but I guess it's, this is about information and informing you guys to make um, a different decision. So hopefully this is one that you might not have th- thought about before. Or you might have a bunch of kids. Uh, you might have three it's, kids it's, it's and so you much get a busy lifestyle and you're like, no, you know what? Putting chicken nuggets and chips in there and smiley faces. Then look, I, uh, it's, it's I understand that. I understand that. Don't be a fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> you have some angry parents. <laughs> <laughs> you like a fucking mum. No, I totally understand when it cut like when it comes to feeding kids. It's so fucking difficult because mm. they need to cook every single day, mm. clean up all that every single day, then look after the kids as soon as they finished eating. It's it's difficult. Aye, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, it's a hard task. Aye. Right. So next the next one we're going to be going to is snacking. So what is your opinion on snacking then so snacking coming back to the point where we said prioritize protein with every meal when i find out that someone's only having one or two meals a day i find that they're snacking multiple times throughout the day mm-hmm. so now snacking snacking was not a thing 30 years ago i don't believe like i think, I think it's a recent thing that's only just sort of starting to come up with the how um a there is an abundance of food that are ve- uh, available. I don't think we had like <laughs> sheer bags of like crisps. Two seconds off for my dad. <laughs> da, did, you, did you snack all that way back in? <laughs> but snacking is definitely getting more and more of a thing because the, if you look at the quote unquote processed foods, it sort of falls a lot. A lot of it definitely falls in this category. Very rarely do you see people eat a banana and an apple for a snack. Oh, right, so see, <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> right, you think you were right? You first met Jillian. Would you go and have movie nights and get another snack? Right, so this is what I'm going to come on to. Mm-hmm. So snacking, I think, can be a powerful tool to shift the mindset for some individuals. So by swapping the... Somebody cuts out their snacking, basically they're eliminating most of the carbs that they're consuming. Mm-hmm. Arguably, like most snacks, it's carbs that you're eating, chocolate bars, whatever it may be, crisps. But if you swap that that snack to a protein yogurt, to, to an apple, to a banana, you're getting a different nutritious value from that. Mm-hmm. I like the snacking for people who are maybe coming down from a higher calorie standpoint down the way, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I like to have it as, look, there's your meals. You've kind of worked out what fits right for you. Here's here's not an allowance of snacks, but just understanding, like, why is he want a chocolate bar? Like, I want a, a good strategy I, I like for kind of reducing your calories at night is um, before you if, you, if it's a chocolate that you're going for, like, say to yourself, like, could you if you swapped that for an apple just now would you still want it if the answer's no you ain't hungry you're just craving the, mm-hmm. you're craving mm-hmm. the engineered de- design food or whatever 100 percent. um snacking i i love st- i love snacking do you I, 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 I don't i don't do snack no at all no you sure i thought i seen you no i don't snack other it people's, so other people's stuff no 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 so, so so my strategy for my clients is i go like look we're going to try our best never to snack but i say i say this if you like chocolate or crisps or there's something that you would struggle to cut out tough shit <laughs> <laughs> stop <laughs> fucking having it I go fucking no allow that <laughs> no so what I say is I go look 
if you if there's some things in your life that right now you couldn't cut out and you really fucking enjoy it, mm-hmm. have a meal and straight after have it, mm-hmm. right? Because you're in the habit of having meals, and I think that's so important to so many people. Because they just have food here, food here. Have the, they have 300 calories Aye. for their breakfast, they have 300 calories for their lunch, and then they have 800 calories in a snack. Aye, no, get used to having a, a full meal, meal, and first. if you want a bit of chocolate, a bit of crisps with it, totally fine, yeah, but yeah. get used to eating 800 calories at once of mostly nutritious food. Aye. If you want a bag of crisps, have a bag of crisps. Aye. I don't mind. I think as well, the, we talked about the psychological programmed way of when you're feeding your body. So if you're always snacking it, 11 o'clock during the day you're snacking at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and then you start working with a trainer and then you don't your trainer says right we're not going to snack we're going to eat a wee bit more here initially like your body's like oh I'm, oh I'm hungry why am I hungry at this time all right fuck it I'll just binge I'll just or whatever it is that you end up doing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think there is a psychological um step to overcome with that but that's a good point like uh, it's not saying that you can't have it it's just saying right we're going to actually fill have it have it in a different I, fashion I feel a, a, with a different structure so as we've explained having protein in every meal so what we didn't explain earlier is obviously protein is the most satiating macronutrient right. it makes you feel full for longer it makes you feel fuller at the time if you have two chicken breasts at once you're like fuck I'm quite full the rest of this meal's got to be hard so if you know you're going to have your what'd you say a big job <laughs> so I thought you said <laughs> <laughs> you're like fuck man the job coming up no so uh, oh, you put sorry, me up sorry, sorry, sorry. no no satiating food satiating food so if you've had your protein and you're eating the rest of the meal and you know you're going to have your crisp and chocolate which you're looking forward to mm-hmm. see by the end of it you might not even have it anymore I know I know. you might not even have it Aye, maybe, maybe not I, maybe I, not no, I'm not saying like, every time, but there will be times where you go, you get into more of that mindset of going, you know what, I don't actually Aye, why need that. Why do you want it? I think it's, it's, it's having the space to think, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, because I know if I go out for dinner, and I, I, in fact, when we went to lodge in Loch Lomond there, we were, I had an overnight, we had three course meal. I would never have a three course meal. Mm-hmm. And because I had it, because it was there, I ended up doing it. And what did I order? The side of chips. And then... You went for the, 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 what was that, orange mousse cheesecake and I was... Sounds all right. Three, three spoonfuls in, I, I should have stopped, but because uh, it was so tasty and so good, like, mm-hmm. that didn't get that hung, that full signal until it was too late and then mm. I was sitting bloated, <laughs> like hell. But I, I think sometimes when you go, you should do that, like, 100%, oh, you yeah, should, so, so you should the, splurge. Aye, so the, the mindset of that was, it was our 10-year anniversary, mm-hmm. and the healthy thing to do in that moment was spend time with my wife and have a good meal. And As we was, spoke was, about before. Aye. And uh, so, aye, so process, so that was the, what one was that? That was... That was number five, so we've got one more, but it's semi-similar to snacking. <clears throat> Not exactly the same, so it's eating foods while being distracted. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is Which one, m- I, I, I never really thought of this one before. I remember going into a, a post I was doing like a couple of months ago, and then the more I thought about it, I heard it initially, and then the, I was like, well, oh, diff- like you, some people listening to this, like, don't eat foods while watching TV. Don't eat foods while being on your phone. I, I remember comments on the Facebook post that I'd done. Like, you get these keyboard warriors like, I ain't bother me. I'll just take the TV out of my living room. <laughs> I'm still going to consume 1,200 calories on this dish up longer. And I was like, no, like, you're, you're missing the point. Mm-hmm. The whole point of this is that when, you're, when your mind is distracted, you will mindlessly eat. Mm-hmm. And you you said you said to me like what did we do when we first met like movie nights you were buying full top of, you're buying packets of sweets chocolate buttons the the whole shebang and over time in the last ten years of being with Jalen in the last probably twenty years since I got my first Xbox and started the game like I've built up habits and behaviours that every time I eat or every time I game or every time I watch a movie, there is a there is an urge there to try and keep my hands busy or, or eat. And you spoke about this before, but the, the dopamine hit because it's it's feeding into that cycle. Mm-hmm. It's you just, you're programmed in a way that that's why I'm hungry. Like when I'm watching a movie and I'm like, I'm actually a wee bit hungry now. It's because every time I've watched a movie before, I've had a fucking packet of crisps or buttons with us. But you're no hungry, as we've already spoke exactly. about. Aye. You're just wanting that dopamine. Aye. So you go for crisps, some sweeties, mm-hmm. some chocolate. Just sitting, and then you get dopamine for the gaming or the show, and then you go back to the chocolate. And by the time you know, you're feeling shit because you've gamed for so long, and then you're feeling shit because you've ate so much, and then, as you say, you've stayed up all night, so you you wake up fucking late the next day, and you feel shit. I just remembered something. We, when I, I mean, I think I was 24, so this would have been about five years ago. Maybe, maybe four or three years ago, when we started living on our own down in Nottingham. 
we'd always in the weekly shop buy big share bags and stuff because there would always be a movie night a week and stuff like that and then it became at the point we were crushing the whole thing in one sitting rather than drip feeding it throughout the mm -hmm. week so we made a decision to not uh, buy that stuff in the weekly shop but if we wanted it we'd still go out and have it mm -hmm. and this is another good strategy so if you're listening and if you're listening to us talk about eating chocolate eating crisp and you're like oh, i'm starving a little hack that i like to do with that is not keep it in the house not say that i don't want it but create a barrier in between you mm -hmm. trying, walking through the kitchen and having it mm -hmm. i then had to jump in my car i'd have to drive down to the shops and then get it there'd be times where i'd absolutely be doing that at two in the morning but there'd be other times like you know what nah. the first time you do it you go nah, fuck it it's worth it and then you catch and then, yourself you look at your reflection driving <laughs> the morning, like, what am i doing for a top of pringles <laughs> but the second time you go look was it actually that worth it and the answer is no. It's easy to walk through your kitchen, but it's harder to walk through the shop. Aye. No, no, drive to the shop. Or drive to the shop. Or even walk for, for some cases. Aye, like, aye. Create, create as many barriers in between that that as you can. So, um, so cool. That was, I think it was a good episode. So. No, that was good. I think if you, like, as we spoke about in other ways, set realistic goals. So we've gave you six. Avoiding drinking calories. Drink more water. Prioritise protein with every meal. Oh. Patch processed foods. Snack less or just don't snack at all. I don't snack, but they'll snack. So, I mean, everybody's different. I've not got mm. a sweet tooth, to be honest. Do you I, know? No, 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 I don't have a sweet tooth. I just love burgers and that. <laughs> no, but like, I'm being serious. Like, <laughs> my burgers are my sweet tooth. I could sit and eat three burgers Do instead. You know, I think a lot of their sweet tooth is generally like stems for your childhood. It's like, I was always like tiptoeing about the house and sneaking down in the middle of the night and then eating stuff. And then I think. That's just compounded over time. Ah, yeah, but that, like, no, but that, that, that's the same every day. I know. I everybody, know. Every day is the exact same. And then the last one, which I, I can understand why people are like, what the fuck are they talking about? But I, I never even thought of this until you told me, but that eating foods while being distracted is actually quite severe. Because when I look at <clears throat> my dad and my stepmom, that's when they would eat crisps mm -hmm. when they were sitting watching telly. And then they would moan how they were gaining weight. And I'm like, I actually, when I think about it now, I'm like, that's when they were gaining that weight because they had no idea the amount of portion sizes they were putting down that time. Exactly. Because you're not thinking about how much you're eating. I'm sure it was, I'm sure when, I think it was an American study, but it was like 500 calories less when you were just eating, just with no distractions in front of you. Now also if you have a plate of food, you're going to eat most likely the whole plate of food, but it, it's the it's more the snacking when you're sitting in front of your TV. It's more the, the other additional things. But even when it comes to it, if you are, you are, there with that meal you're like oh, actually i'm quite full like i, I actually don't want this so um, I, th I think one last thing when it comes to snacking you can count drinking beer is snacking you could do you I know what i mean, I mean if you were sitting in a quiet room would you drink that full crate of beer some people would <laughs> right but <laughs> like, see like my dad i mm -hmm. know he, if he wasn't watching telly he wouldn't drink as many beers as he did i guess because he's, 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 he's associated with it he's associated with same, it same with gaming mm -hmm. but, but in fact my brother like you you listen to this like he was in a bad routine with it he mm -hmm. his friday nights saturday nights were a distraction when he was gaming mm -hmm. they became associated with drinking a bottle of wine a bottle of wine <laughs> he was actually <laughs> telling me that though. he was actually telling me that the other day um and think like that was just over years of that um habit had just caught up solidified yeah, it just it, and and don't get me wrong it was it was hard for him but he went a, i think he went a whole year without drinking fucking hats off them because he smashed it aye, aye. Uh, and he still so, some, it. sometimes that's what's needed sometimes you need to you need to go cold turkey with it. cold turkey with a few things so some people are addicted to food some people are addicted to drink some people are addicted to drugs i don't think it's for everybody but it's a good no it's no it's no it's no for everybody 100 percent no for everybody aye. but there will be people out there you know like you maybe should go cold turkey with chocolate <laughs> <laughs> i've tried i'm struggling aye, aye, Nutella, aye. Nutella is my crypt tonight man <laughs> is it five cd five kilo tubs I don't buy five kilo no, no, tubs no, no. then. Listen, listen, see when I was, I think I was about 17, um, so when my mum stayed in Beacon, uh, down next to the hospital and I would stay up and play Halo on my Xbox. I remember buying one and I was like, or my mum had bought it and it was a birthday present, that's what it was because somebody knew like, uh, how much I like chocolate or Nutella and uh, I was sitting eating it and eating it and I remember the spoon hitting the bottom of the tub and I was like, holy shit, I've done that and obviously the full signal's not kicked in yet, so I'm like, I actually feel right. But in half an hour later, mate, the cramps in my stomach <laughs> and my arse. I was going to say. <laughs> but I, I've done that before. I don't know how many is in a five kilo tub in the teller, but it's about 2,000 calories. I a lot. I, a fucking lot. <laughs> you're disgusting. That is fucking bad. <laughs> mate, sit you down. But I hope... Are you sure? Are you sure you're in shape? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so again, I, we, we, we bit a, a relaxed episode there, but I think uh, we shared some good points. Hopefully mm -hmm. you guys enjoys that. Uh, enjoy that. Um, if you did, 
uh, we'd love it if you could share this on your social media tag mm-hmm. us in some posts leave some comments we we, are we honestly, appreciate anything everything. that you give us uh, shares likes just even coming up and talking to us i know you know i mean so many people have came up and said to me look here i'm actually loving that podcast i'm like right it does feel i'll good. get back on it then <laughs> it does it keeps us it keeps us when we're talking about motivated it keeps us motivated to of us as to why we're doing this we know we're not perfect we know we're pissing off a few people with some things mm-hmm. that we're well, saying the whole purpose of this is to give people information and entertainment and to <laughs> improve people's lives and sometimes when we're making these we're like, well, we're like I think we're doing it I know, we think so, so when people when people, so. when people leave comments it really touches and goes right Aye. we'll keep it going no I know so as always thanks for tuning in you can find us if you're just finding us on for the first time you can find us on Instagram at Bulletproof Mindset UK you can find me at Coach Crosser and you can find me at Raw Gym Fit see you guys soon have a nice one